we built in a really easy way to communicate to your customer base or your or your potential lead base that you have with different with different offers. So your different campaigns would maybe be hitting your accountants, hitting up your legal companies, hitting up uh, medical. And notice I'm talking about those industries with high security needs. We do really well in high security needs environments because our security is bar none. Uh, when, it, when it comes down to a security comparison, we really just went out against just about everyone. And we've been doing that forever. Most of the companies who are getting close to us now have adopted since then. Uh, gateway information. So your payment gateway. We, we have supportauthorized.net, PayPal Pro, and PayPal Standard. So let's say you have an authorized.net account. You come in here. You plug in your transaction key and your login ID. And you hit submit, and you're good to go. Now when people come and they sign up on your website, they'll enter their credit card information, and it's going to go into your account. Uh, changing the plans, you know, we can change all the pricing and everything. We have a support ticketing system for those of you who may not have one or just want a simple one for this specifically. Uh, we have a full content management system built in here. Again, for those of you familiar with WordPress and Joomla, you're going to be right at home here. So it's going to come with a couple default pages, you know, primarily your home page and then some uh, some internal pages, contact us, terms and conditions, thank you, your sign up page. You should go here and you'll, you'll modify the content and the messaging. Uh, you have some metadata controls, hit counter, uh, whatever you want to do. You can add new pages, new articles, new layouts. Uh, really is, is complex or as simple as you want it to be. Nice file management system built into this. So if you need to link to a file that's already on the server, you can do that. Or you say, you know what, this I, the file's not here, I'm going to have to just upload it from my machine. And then you just hit it right there. So it makes, it gives you the ability to be quite flexible with a visual editor as well as going through source. And I recommend whenever you start messing around with this, you should probably just copy all the source into a notepad file and back it up. That way you can restore if you uh, want to get back to where it started. And that's the Premier Web Package. So you see that it really is uh, quite nice. You see a couple, or if you go to, here's one of our partners who's really put this to work, and we can see that you know he's really made some changes and how the template worked out. And with no web design experience at all, he's been able to add all these different pages and use the sign up page, and it's just uh, really quite quite simple and quite quick to get to market with something with a nice web presence like this. And then with Pulse, any questions on the web package before we move on? We get to Pulse, and Pulse again allows you to view different events. So we can see all the different machines that it's being deployed on. We can go to the specific event and say all the events that are happening with the backups. Uh, we can go to backup session details, which again is that second layer that we're talking about. And you can see numbers of files, error count. You can even go to more details. So let's say we have four, four errors. And now we have an excerpt from the log. So we can get a kind of look and a preliminary look into the system to see what's happening before either remoting in or uh, whatever you need to do to make sure that the backup's running fine. So it really provides a nice way of managing that. And then there's also backup policies, which a policy is a backup set in a schedule. So if you're installing this on, you know, a, a laptop fleet of, you know, 500 users, how do you make sure that people are backing up the folders you need to back up? Well, you can simply just go to the, simple, the machines that are here or the deployments. A deployment is a, a backup account on a specific machine because you can have more than one backup account on a machine and you can have um, more than one machine on a backup account. And we have the backup policy applied here. If we want to apply a different policy, it's just a simple edit. And then you select the policy you want. Hit update. And you're good to go. So it's really a, a very simple uh, get right to it uh, system that lets you, you know, monitor what's happening and also control what should be happening. 
all without violating your security compliance. Any questions on that? Right, I'm actually going to load up uh, Windows 2008 R2 VM and show you a bit of what server save can do for you. Any questions about the program, what it takes to get into the program, uh, delivery timelines, things of that nature? I can't wait to get started, huh? Okay, so actually I had EGR already launched here. So this is our faux partner, Acme Technologies, with Acme Online Backup, and there's an incremental just ran. So you log into the, to the server save client, and it brings you this step. So this is an application view and there's also a use case view so you want a laptop or PC a file server application or database server exchange or SBS well we're just going to go through by application and I think most of you will probably go through by application anyways <laughs> Frank says is assuming step one is to sign up online well actually step one is to call on our partner specialist and they're going to talk with you about your businesses and your customers and make sure that the programs that we have available for you are right for you and then find the appropriate level for you. So they're going to go through a really detailed ROI for the program and make sure that this really fits for you. So that would be actually step one. And then you can decide, you know, based on that conversation, which one you want to come in on. And again, uh, if you guys are, those of you who have heard enough and just want to get into talking with somebody, if you go to our main website, the number's all over the place. It's 877-896-3611. And uh, hit extension 1 and you'll get to sales. Okay, so here's the application. So the, the online backup and recovery agent, this is the agent-based program, the file and folder system. Uh, so I'm not going to be going through that right now. But I'm going to launch, I'm going to go ahead and launch the bare metal image creator and show what you can do here. So we have the wizard set up, we got our disk map, you know, your Windows volume manager. We have backup jobs, we have one scheduled. I'm going to get rid of it because I'm going to create that exact job. Uh, different destinations, and then backup history. So we go to wizards, and I hit backup. Let's create a new backup job. So hit next. So we have system reserved volume. This is never selected when you want to do an image backup. You would never take a volume of that. Uh, but you could select multiple volumes or just a single volume. I'm just going to take the exchange example here. Hit next. And now it's asking you to define a destination. So this is where you would go and you define where your staging machine is. So you could do that. For these purposes, I'm just going to hit the F drive, the virtual drive. Next. And now you specify your schedule. So this would be familiar to those of you who have been using uh, some type of image-based backup program previously. It's pretty historical looking. Uh, typically, you don't really need full backups on a weekly basis unless you're still dealing with limited tape media. And you have to restore each subsequent incremental before you can get to the point that you want to get to. This system's intelligent enough for you to select the incremental that you'd like to get to, and it'll append all the full backups and incrementals in between as necessary. So you no longer have to do this because the whole, the whole idea behind this strategy is that if I want to restore the Thursday, I have to restore Sunday's full backup and then every incremental backup I've run until I get to the one on Thursday I want. You don't have to do that anymore. So you can do, say, full backups once a month and then do incremental backups throughout the month. You know, whatever you have. It depends environment to environment, but you have the flexibility to do what you like. So we hit next. Uh, compression standard is recommended. You can encrypt the password also. And this is a, this is local a local backup setup. So I can 
go through and I can say, okay, well, we want to have this encrypted 256-bit AES before we even do anything with it off-site. It's not recommended that you go ahead and do this if you plan on taking it off-site because our off-site backup program is going to encrypt and compress the data before it's transferred anyways. So it's encrypted at 256-bit AES, transferred over a 128-bit SSL, then stored at an additional 1024-bit AES, and replicated to a completely geographically set, separate second data center. So we don't need that at first level of encryption at this point if you plan on going off-site with it. Pre-snapshot commands, post-snapshot commands, post-backup commands, uh, restart systems, pause systems, whatever you want to do. Uh, this is a transactionally consistent image-based backup. And anyone know the difference between a transaction consistent backup and a crash consistent backup? We're running on time. I'll just real quickly. A crash consistent backup means it acts just like a crash would. So if you have a transaction where $1,000 leaves Frank's account and is going to be put into, say, Gary's account, but the crash happens right after it leaves Frank's account, then the thousand dollars is pretty much lost. It's not in Frank's account, but it's not yet in Gary's, and there's no and transactions go in pairs, so it's just gone. A transactionally consistent backup is what we're doing here, and it will actually communicate with the databases that's backing up and saying, "Hey, database, you got any transactions in queue?" And database will say, "Yeah, I do. Hold on a minute." Finishes the transaction and then then pauses and says, "Okay, go ahead and take your snapshot." Our system will take the snapshot, and then the transactions will resume. And that all happens in milliseconds. So the, that's why historically image-based backups weren't thought of as being great and you wouldn't want to run it if the database is open because you run a high risk of doing that. But with a transactionally consistent backup, you can run this while the, back, while the, while the database is open, which is nice because uh, especially if you're talking about like an e-commerce database or, or a web server, you don't want to have to shut those things off for any given amount of time if you can help it. Set your retention period, so you can say, okay, I want to only have, say, you know, three months of backups, you know, whatever it is. Um, otherwise, I'm going to delete the incrementals or delete those things. Frank, great questions. Frank has two good questions. One, I'm assuming there is an Apple equivalent. No, there is no Apple equivalent. We do have a light Mac product coming out as a file and folder program. Uh, it's available on our website if you want to take a look for it. We're coming out with it for our partners in a generic branded sense. But if you go to our uh, SOS download page, you can download the Mac client and see for yourself what it looks like. It's, uh, it's geared very much for an individual laptop or workstation. Then the other question is, is there a log that allows me to review transactions for roll forward and roll back events? You know, that's a good question. I'm not quite sure. If we go to backup history here, maybe this will answer our question. Let me go ahead and finish this. Um, so let's, let's table that for a second. So split the image. Again, this is somewhat historical if you're dealing with limited tape media or for, the, for you partners who work with our file and folder program, we used to recommend if you want the image off-site, then use a program like the ones we're competing with now, like Zenith or Intronus or other 65. Program the backup job so that it splits the image into smaller chunks and then take it off-site with our system. Well, we designed image streams so that you don't have to do that. It's designed specifically to handle large files. So we'll hit next. Summary. Great. Done. If I go to backup history, it gives you specific information as far as what's happening here. And then we'll see as far as rollback transactions, that that'd probably be a specific, it'd probably be specific per database you're looking at. So these are all the transactions for the backup running. And as far as what you have, I don't think there's a, a rollback to or from. It's going to pause the database as it is, take a snapshot of everything that's existed, and then you can restore to that point. But it doesn't give you 
a restore point if you didn't run a backup, if that makes sense. 